Hi foodies, so what separates my Zupa Tuscana soup, which means soup of Tuscany, Tuscany being a part of Italy, yes, that's Jerry Springer, uh, from everybody else's? Well, besides the fact that my paternal grandmother was from Tuscany, and I can assure you this soup doesn't exist there, um, I worked for the Olive Garden off and on for about 10 years. Most of the time it was a second job for me, but sometimes it wasn't, and I was able to work my way up to manager. Once you're a manager, you have to learn the recipes, um, at the very least how to make them, in case the kitchen starts crashing and you have to jump on the back of the line and help the cooks out. But uh, especially if customers have questions about what is in their food for allergy reasons or religious purposes. So, you know, the servers know a lot about what's in the food, but the managers really, really have to know it. Now, our soup comes to us from the Olive Garden kitchen already pre-made. It comes in soup bags that we then put into a bat of boiling water to heat it up. And then we put it in a soup warmer where the server can dish it out as needed. Um, these are all of the different dupes and Olive Garden recipes that I have found on the internet. And I have to laugh because think to the last time you ate this soup at the restaurant, when did you ever see bacon bits in it? Right? Never. Because there's not bacon bits in this soup at the restaurant. Now there is a bacon trick I will be showing you, but if you look at some of these dupes and some of these ingredients, I mean, I honestly, I, I'm, I'm seeing ground turkey, I'm seeing wine, I'm seeing kitchen bouquet, red potatoes, um, it, it, just stuff that is absolutely not even close to the real, there's not even alcohol in. <laughs> yeah, there. I, I mean, there's, uh, yeah. Swiss chard, come on, man. No, absolutely not. So, I'm going to show you the correct and, uh, you know, the easiest way to do a Zupa Tuscana recipe because there, it's actually a very simple soup to make and it's, I mean, yeah, I'm looking at that one, the white wine and kitchen bouquet browning sauce. Like, I low carb spicy chicken sausage. Okay, I mean, yeah, you can do with it what you want, but don't call it a dupe. Hi foodies. So there's a lot of explaining to do about this soup, which is why this is one of my more difficult recipes. So you want to start out with Italian sausage that is already out of the casing. So it looks like hamburger. So it's already ground and you want to do mild for a specific reason. Okay. Olive Garden does use the spicy, but every manufacturer is different. And so you want to be able to control your own spice level for your family, especially if you've got kids. It would really be, you know, bad if you got an Italian sausage brand that was way too hot and they didn't want to eat it. So what makes Italian sausage hot is red pepper flakes. So I say just go ahead and add your own red pepper flakes and then that way you can, you know, it's all on you how hot and spicy or a mild you would like to have it. You can always add more heat, you can't take it away. So that is my suggestion to you. And now you want to just uh, start browning it. Once it's started to be browned, once it's started to be, but that doesn't sound correct. Anyway, uh, you're going to add a sweet yellow onion and some garlic. We're just going to saute that up in there. Now my particular sausage did not get really super greasy, so I didn't really need to drain it, but you might have to, and that's fine. Um, and I'm getting a lot of the flavorful brown bits that will be deglazed once we're adding some broth to it. Now I'm just going to stir that up obviously very well. Sorry for that camera angle, it looks like I'm about to bop you in the nose, but it is what it is. Definitely not my calling of, of shooting video. Anyway, so now we are going to be adding the red pepper flakes. I don't like it that spicy. My fiance loves it super spicy, so he can add more heat. And just salt and pepper, that is the only seasonings. There's no Italian herbs in here, there's no oregano, there's none of that nonsense. It's just, well, not nonsense, but you know what I'm saying. It, it, it's not. There's not a whole lot in here. So when I see some of these online recipes calling for that, I just, okay, basil. No, there's no basil in this soup. Only if you want it to be. Okay, so now, this is the shape the potatoes come in, the Zupa Tuscana soup at the restaurant. There's a reason for that. And yes, you want to keep the skins on because that's how it's served and it's more nutritious. 
But when you take your soup spoon and you cut these into these potatoes, it creates, the starches are released, the potatoes fall apart, and it creates the consistency of the broth that you would like to have if you want to emulate the soup that's at the restaurant because it creates sort of it, its own creamy consistency. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate on this. I, I see my potatoes are green. Yep, I know. That is because they've been exposed to light too long. I bought these on um, sale. They were already pre-packaged up. I literally got like five potatoes for less than a dollar. Times are hard, honey, right now. So yeah, I'm not running back out to the store in a pandemic. I'd rather risk getting sick from the potato than the Rona. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a toxin that they say could upset your stomach. It's not enough to get us sick, this little amount here. But aesthetically, if it freaks you out, then, you know, go get some new potatoes. Me, I don't care. Disclaimer, we already ate this soup. I'm making this video the next day. We're all fine. So I just added some chicken broth. And now the bacon. Here's what we're doing. We are flavoring the soup with the bacon. The bacon acts as a flavoring agent. It is not the star of the show. And it, we don't want to overpower. This is why we're not browning the bacon with the sausage. Because then the sausage would cook in bacon grease and it would overpower the soup. Now, if you're a bacon lover, I get it and you can do whatever you want, but that is why you don't see the actual bacon bits in the Zupa Toscana when you eat it from the Olive Garden. So, um, this is this is how we're doing it. So now we're going to top it off with just plain water because the same reason you don't want to use all chicken broth because this isn't a chicken soup and you don't want to, you know, change the flavor profile significantly, which if this was all broth would do. So we've added the water and now we're just going to, you know, I'm just going to keep, I don't know, stir crazy today. Or yesterday yeah I, okay I did get rid of that one super green potato um, yeah, I, yeah I get so much hate probably on this I don't even care trolls internet trolls whatever so um, stirring it up and trying to get up those little brown bits on the bottom because that's all about flavor deglazing and there we go so now that it is all incorporated stirred up I'm going to bring it to a boil and we are going to simmer this covered for an hour that's right kids an hour now meanwhile pull out your heavy whipping cream carton and let that sit for uh, that hour to come to room temp you never want to add cold dairy to hot foods it will curdle now let's pretend that um, we are going to put this soup in the fridge now because this soup is better overnight. And the reason for that is because when you get it at the restaurant, it's been sitting overnight. So um, like anything, like chili, stews, many different foods are so much better the next day. And these soups from, from most corporate restaurant chains are, are so good because they've been allowed to sit and, you know, and meld their flavors. I just tested it for spice level and salt level. And so I'm adding a little bit more red pepper flakes to it as well as I'm just, just gonna sprinkle it with a little chicken bouillon for a little flavor boost of salt. And where am I, there we are. So if you, if you have the time, I would definitely recommend that you make this the day before serving it, but do not add the kale. And yeah, you're also gonna be taking the bacon out, I think. Did I do that already? Did I show that already? I don't even know where I'm at with this. But yeah, once once it's... Yeah, here we go. We're going to take that bacon out. Uh, add in the heavy cream. And... Yes, you're going to fish the bacon pieces out. You don't want, you know... Now, I, you could eat them. Sure. I rinsed them off and taste tested it for spice and they were fine to, enough to give to the dog. Um, you know, do eat, repurpose them however you want, but don't serve them. <laughs> I mean, they don't stay in the soup. At this point, you would put it in your fridge. And let's pretend that I did that and I just reheated this. So now it's the next day because that is the point 
that you're going to add your kale and it's kale it's not spinach it's not swiss chard it's not you know all the uh, the crazy stuff that i've seen it the olive garden has used kales at least since 1998 when i started there so but you this is how they serve it we immediately put the kale in as soon as the soup goes into the soup warmer so everybody gets fresh kale you don't want it to wilt so serve it individually and then here we go that's yes that is what they use and you sprinkle it with the cheese which happens to be romano olive garden uses romano cheese not parmesan it's a little bit uh not spicier it a little bit bolder than parmesan very similar uh profile though and optional sprinkle a little bit of lemon juice to brighten up the flavors bring out the flavors but that's completely optional obviously they don't do that at the restaurant but it's just a little tip and trick enjoy